So how to find your top sellers? The first thing that is uh, very important when you when you create you know a, a product and when you start testing the shop is um, who is going to buy it. So the reason I'm asking this is is because I see we see a lot of designers you know crafting uh, very beautiful products, very beautiful dresses, very complex um, fabrics, sophisticated uh, beauty sets with uh, tons of, of various products, and we always ask them, you know. Uh, have you se- have you sold it before? Did anybody from your friends, from your family, from your close community, your neighbors, your coworkers, did, did, did anyone actually already buy this from you? Or is this um, like a fantasy customer that you have in your mind who is going to want this? Because maybe you would want this, of course, but, uh, but do the people around you want it as well? Uh, when you present them a product, how do they react? What is their feedback? What is their feedback on pricing? What is their feedback on, on the design itself, on the picture? Uh, and that is a very important part is uh, get to know your potential buyer. And for that, data is important. Not having an image of, uh, of someone who doesn't really exist. And it's, it's a very common mistake in, uh, in all sides of e-commerce, in fashion, in beauty, in, in crafts is to, to have this uh, fantasized idea of a customer that does not exist, who will spend infinite amount of money on your shop because he or she has found your shop perfectly. And, but in reality, it's not the way it happens. Uh, customers are very, very sensitive to uh, tons of things. And two of the, most, uh, st- of the most important stuff they are sensitive to is the first is the pricing, obviously. I'm, I'm sure I'm not, learning, I'm not teaching you anything when I say that... Uh, with uh, what's happened uh, in with Black Friday, Amazon um, discounts everywhere, customers are always looking for you know uh, the cheapest thing that they can buy. And if they want, if they are ready to put in the price, it's because you have a brand name already. So if you you can definitely sell at high price points, um, especially in beauty, which is very important to um, to gain trust. And not to sell, you know, crappy products. You know, cheap beauty products used to be a thing, but uh, more and more c- c- customers are being uh, conscious about it and want to buy, you know, organic stuff. Um, even in clothing, they are not. They are less and less into fast fashion. At least that's what uh, trends start to say. So if you want to sell at higher price points, you definitely have to have a brain name. And to have a brain name, you have to start somewhere. So building a community is, is the most important part. And it starts by asking yourself who is the, the buyer? Uh, what does your community think about the product? What is the feedback of your friends, of your brothers and sisters, of your parents, of your cousins, of your coworkers? And the third part is, uh, is your product easily usable or wearable every day? Is it something that uh, I will be happy to use, uh, that I will be happy to wear? that is easy to wear and that is easy to use or is it something that is complicated you know is it um is it uh, something that has to combine with something else is it too flashy is it too sophisticated and and if so then maybe i can only wear it in some occasions and it's great sometimes you know if you're making a, i don't know wedding dresses or bespoke outfits it's great if you manage to find customers for that who will be very happy to wear it on their special day but um, if you really want ambassadors for your brand, then you, you need to have people who use it every day or uh, at least, like, you know, once a week, once a month. But current usage is definitely what gets the word out. We've seen it uh, with many designers, you know, their brand starts growing once they have five to 10 regular customers who come and, and check their shop every time they have new products and they talk about the shop to their friends. When they wear it to work, people say, oh, where did you get this? Um, when you talk about skincare, you have so many beauty influencers and some, and beauty is actually a very big um, discussion topic among young women and older women. So, uh, oh, I use this cream. It's great. Uh, where did you get it? Well, I got this from this Nigerian designer. And, uh, so um, getting the word out, very important, um, and getting to know your customer, very important. Uh, the second tip on finding your top seller, it's actually very related. Once you sell. Once you have made a sale, once you have made two sales, five sales, ask for feedback. That's a crucial part of growing any brand and any business, ask for feedback. So whenever, even if you give product to a friend or something, ask for feedback. Did you find it easy to wear? Did you find it easy to use? Do you find the results about uh, coming uh, after two days, after five days, after a week, after 10 days? You, you know, your, um, your customers will often know your product better than you. Because you, you've spent so much time 
crafting your product, you will forgive things to your product that your customers will not forgive. And that's something that's very important. Uh, and we see it uh, every day on Africa because we spend so much time, you know, crafting the website and crafting some services. And once we put it out and we see the usage of the service and we're like, oh, sellers don't like it. You know, it's not handy to use. It's not easy to use. To us, it makes a lot of sense to have built this because we spend so much time on it and we know it by heart, etc. And we know all the small details. But um, but whenever somebody sees your product for the first time, they have fresh eyes. And fresh eyes is something that you do not have anymore because you're into the craft. And so asking for feedback is 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 super important to improve your product and also to market your product because your comments, your ratings, that will be uh, your strength as a brand. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of social proof. In marketing, it's, it's very common. So people buy what they see other people buy, which is why we put so much emphasis on Africa on the ratings. And if you go on your shop, the more you sell, the more ratings you have, the more ratings you have, the better you will sell because customers know that they can trust your brand. Uh, more easy so asking for feedback and as a side question what else would you like to buy from me so you bought a, a dress uh, maybe would you like to buy a head wrap what is the thing that you would have been happy to receive at the same moment that you got my product so if you buy if you bought a dress would you have like yeah, a belt a matching belt a matching head wrap uh, some shoes that would be that would be going on with it maybe just some styling tips but um, the idea is to create some sort of um, dependency on your brand. Um, you managed to style somebody with your clothing. You managed to make up somebody with your beauty product. Well, what else would they need that would fit their wardrobe, that would fit the, their bathroom? Um, so if you're selling, a, I don't know, a moisturizing cream, maybe a scrub that, that would be additional to it, that would, that would make a great set, and maybe a sponge that would, that would fit as well in the, in the toiletry. And if you're selling, a, like I said, a dress, maybe you would like a top with it or a, a small belt. I don't know, but anything that, that's within your area of expertise, uh, ask them, ask your customers, just openly, you know, what else would you have been happy to buy from me? Okay, this, I can make you a discount. Then. Or you can make some sort of referral program. If you bring me customers, I give you a free head wrap or something like that. That's definitely a good way to go. The third step is iteration. Very simple concept, very important to, to implement as well. If you sell something once, okay, maybe it's just like, you know, you found the right customer, he or she liked, and so he or she bought it. If you sell twice, five times, 10 times, then the, there's something in your product that attracts attention and that, that attracts uh, retention. If there's something in your product that does that, then you have to iterate. By iterate, I mean uh, constantly test your products in different variations. If a certain uh, type of dress is selling well, if a certain uh, type of head wrap is selling well, it does something there. So is it the design? Is it the fabric? Is it the pricing? Is it the styling? Um, these are all very important questions you must ask yourself. What makes this product sell more than the others? If it's the fabric, then you can try and make different products with the same fabric. So if you have a dress in a specific fabric that sells well, well, likely a head wrap in the same fabric will also sell well. But if it's the style, then maybe the same style of dress, the same fit, the same cut, but in a different fabric that will also sell well. If it's the pricing, maybe your, your, your dress is priced a little under what's uh, commonly done in Africa, then maybe you have something that you have a market that's open to you, which is people who are looking for cheaper dresses than what they find on the home page. If it's a cream, for instance, maybe you can have, um, I'm not sure obviously if you make a flavored uh, cream with your, your skincare. So, so maybe the cream is, is uh, I don't know, vanilla scent, then maybe something that is orange scent will also sell well. Maybe you can start bundling them together. Maybe you can send some, te some test products in addition to the main one so that people can know, oh, next week or next month, there will be another scent. Uh, I'll be curious to try it. And that's what I'm saying when I say iteration is to constantly test the product to understand what is it exactly in this product that makes it sell well so that you can find other top sellers for your shop. These are the three points to find your top sellers. Identify the market. Who is your potential buyer? What does your community think about it? Who is wearing your product? When are they wearing it? Try to understand also, yes, the when is very important. Is it for a wedding? Is it for an everyday, everyday job? Is it for family time? It's, it's so the when is also important. So who is buying your product? When are they wearing it? What do they think about it? What is their feedback? Uh, what are their comments? What do they have some advice on it? And, and once you have all this, 
is uh, what makes the product sell and can I make similar products sell as well as this, this main one. Once you do this, you start finding what we call your best sellers. And your best sellers are flagship products. They're the products that people will come back to your shop to find. They're the products that the people will tell about to their friends and, and say, you know, I have this one great product that I'm really happy I bought online from this brand. You should you should try. Uh, I think it would fit you greatly, would suit you well. Your skin will love it, etc. 